Hello again. Great to get together and to uh, open God's Word to hear what He might say to us here at Devo today. We are so thankful that you join in with us. I mean, this is why we're doing this, so that we can travel together through the Word and enjoy God's heart for us and then be a blessing to other people as well because we're being blessed by God's presence in our lives. So let's pick this up in uh, chapter uh, 6, verse 4. And we hit something that's probably a somewhat familiar for some of you who have traveled through the Word before or are um, around a Bible teaching church. Uh, a lot of Christians are familiar with this. This is called the, the Great Shema. It uh, means to hear. Uh, and it's, it's something that the uh, people of Israel or, or you know, Jewish people would recite this oftentimes morning and evening. And so it says here in verse uh, 4, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And so the first statement of this is speaking a proclamation of who God is. And so it says, um, and it uses for God Elohim, which is a term of a compound unity. So even though it's saying one, it's, it is, we still believe, as it talks in the New Testament, that it's three in one. And this is something that can easily be kind of, they, they try and skirt around it or dispute it, but the thing is, is, is in Hebrew, this is what this means, a compound unity, and same with the word one, is a kad, which is the same thing that we get as a compound unity. In other words, yes, it's 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 more it's it's altogether one, but three components in that one, and so it fits in. It's not an obscure thought or some brand new thing that there's a three in one: uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in the Trinity. We believe that the Bible teaches that. We see that throughout Scripture, and so we welcome that. We want the Spirit's work in our lives. We want to be washed and cleansed by the blood of the Son, and we need a loving Father to guide us and direct us. This is the important thing, is they're saying that God is one. And what they're saying here is that there is no other. In other words, you, you can't have God plus some other idol in your life, or God plus some other object of your worship in your life, or God wants to be in the number one position in each and every one of our lives. He doesn't want us worshiping other things along with him. So that's the main statement of this. Now it says, what's their response? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And the reason is we know that God first loved us. And so our response then is to love him and to respond in a loving way with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You should tuck these away. This is something that should be kind of a part of our being, assimilate into our being. You shall teach them diligently. As I mentioned, this is going to come up a few times, and I'm going to bring it up as we travel through because I think it's important. You shall talk of them with, when you, with your children. You shall diligently uh, teach them to your children. You shall talk of them when you sit in your house when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. In other words, throughout the course of a day, you're talking about the things of God. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and you shall they shall be as a frontlet between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your, on your gates. In other words, and you'll find, if you travel to Israel, you'll see these little things marked up, and they're put on the wall, uh, on their doorposts. Sometimes you'll see them with a little thing, leather strap, a little box with the, the word strap on their forehead. And this is the idea isn't so much a legalistic aspect of this. It's that you and I are allowing this to permeate and become or assimilate to become a part of our being. The word is to become a part of us. And I like this, whether you're out on the trail like we are together, walking, enjoying the sights and sounds of creation around us, and whether we're doing that together, we're talking about the things of God, whether we're sitting having supper together, we're going to talk about the things of God, whether we're going to sleep, we're going to pray and ask God to bless our night's rest. These are all good practices that God's a part Basically, God's a part of every day. It's not just Sundays, brothers and sisters, that we're Christians. We're Christians every day, and we follow God every day, and we want to live that out. By compartmentalizing, you will stumble your children and other people who watch your life. Don't compartmentalize. Be a Christian 24-7, okay? 
because that's what really matters is God working in and through your life. You are a Christian 24-7. You and I just need to walk that out and act like we are. God help us, each and every one of us, to live out our Christian faith to a world and families and friends that are watching that need to see a loving God represented to them. Be a blessing to one another. God bless you. Have a great day.